49ers lose Super Bowl 58 to the Kansas City Chiefs in overtime. What about the decision to receive the ball in overtime and more Kyle Shanahan's decisions and what's next for those San Francisco 49ers going into 2024? Coming at you right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Crocky 209. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Appreciate all of the everydayers out there. I know it's a tough one on Monday when you wake up and uh, your team loses the Super Bowl, but we are, we're with you all off season long and, and uh, we're going to figure out how this thing can get even better for the San Francisco 49ers going forward every single day. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by FanDuel, make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Croc, when you look ahead at what is next for the San Francisco 49ers, I want to start with just the overall big picture of this team, and and we'll go back and talk about the decisions in overtime, which we didn't talk anything about on the post-game pod because I, to be honest with you, I wasn't thinking about it. And I, I was completely, <laughs> I, was, I was not ready for the new overtime rules. And maybe the 49ers weren't either. And, and we'll get into more of that in a little bit. But just big picture with this football team, Croc. This was such a fun team. This is one of the best teams I can remember watching for the San Francisco 49ers. How good they were top to bottom. How fun they were. Um, and was it the best chance the 49ers had because when you start looking ahead it starts to get pretty difficult to figure out what ways you can be better than how good this team already was and not just where how good they were like how they got to the super bowl right like you had to un- overcome a, a slight deficit against green bay packers but nothing really going your way right like you played as well and had as efficient of a season as you possibly could and then you get into the postseason and all of a sudden it's like 49ers got by. Are they going to lose this game to Green Bay? It started to feel that way. Well, they figured out a way to win the game, and they squeaked out that win. Let's go. You f- go on to the next round. You're playing against Detroit Lions. You fall down 24 to 7. Like, that is not ideal, right? And even then, you figure out a way to, to figure it out, and, and you get some bounces to go your way. You pull out a win. Like, that is difficult. That was – they made it as difficult a path – to the Super Bowl as possible coming off of a season that was one of their best statistically. So then you get into the Super Bowl and you have a 10-point lead and you know, like, man, not that you're fortunate to be in this position, but, man, we had to work really hard to get here and what it took. And to lose that game, you know, do you just assume that next year, hey, don't worry about it, we'll be great, we'll be just as efficient, on offense and, and do the things we did on defense and clobber our teams like the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys, right? Do you expect them to not get better? Do they get worse? Do other teams not get better? Do you have the same kind of success to where when you go into the postseason, you're the heavy favorites again and then still get balls that bounce your way to where you're not the one getting bounced out? And I think we're so used right now to the 49ers uh, going to conference championships. It it's almost feels routine now that you can overlook how difficult it's been for other teams, I man, I talked to my brother, he's a Cowboy fan, and he's like, you know, I talk a lot of trash to you guys about the 49ers and stuff, but he's like, dude, we, we haven't been to a conference title since 1996. So, you know, it, you look at how the 49ers have gotten there and just we continue to get there and, and be very uh, competitive to that standpoint. And when you miss an opportunity like that, it it just stings. You don't know when your next one is going to come. It feels like next year, but if you ask Cowboy fans, it's been like a 30-year drought for them. And, and I go back to this game, and I look at, man, if I, if, if, if I traveled in time, Croc, and came back before the game and said, Brock Purdy is going to complete 60% of his passes. He's going to throw a touchdown. He's not going to turn the ball over at all. Uh, 255-yard passes, two, 255 yards passing. Chris McCaffrey is going to touch the ball 30 times and have a touchdown. The defensive line is going to play the best game they've played all season long, maybe. 
and and I told you all these things were going to happen, you'd be like, oh, let me please bet my mortgage on the 49ers to win the Super Bowl, right? This is exactly what you needed to happen. They started fast, just like we said. That was the key number one for the 49ers, to start fast. And with how good their team was, top to bottom, all the playmakers they have, both sides of the ball, and for them all to show up and play so well early and to be able to dominate the trenches like they did against the Chiefs and still not come away with the win, it's really disheartening, and it's hard for me to envision how the Niners can get a lot better than they did. And even with Brock Purdy, this is his first year starting. He's a young quarterback. And you would think, yeah, he's, he'll probably get better. He has to get better in some regards. But you look at the efficiency numbers he put up this year, how much better can you realistically expect him to play results-wise, even if he is continuing to grow as a quarterback and getting better and maybe making smart decisions or you know whatever he can do as a quarterback to get better? Most quarterbacks aren't the best they're ever going to be in their first or second years in the league. And Brock has already started so fast. Like, what's what's the ceiling? How much better do you think how efficient the 49ers offense was? So, um, I, I Real quick, I have something like on that. Yeah. Because I think with a lot of guys, when they come in, a lot of what they do is just off of an elite, like, traits ability, right? Like, if guys come in and they're doing things and it's like, wow, it's more traits. And then the mental side of it comes. So when you see guys either get better or maybe they don't and they plateau and all of the, they are is someone who – flash because of the upside from a physical trait standpoint, but you see the mental side of things improve as they go on and it catches up with the physical side of things that they can do. But with Brock, it's not as much physical, but he has been astronomically better mentally than most guys coming in. Mm -hmm. And there is that question of what sounds, that was the same conversation with Mac Jones, right? Like, well, how, how much better can Mac Jones get? He's one of the most efficient quarterbacks. He does what he does. He does it well. You know, how much better can he get for this New England Patriots team? And that's going to be the conversation. I'm not comparing Brock to, to Mac, but just in the sense of how they ideally want to win the play and the reps. How do you improve on that? Is it just more so from just I'm so much better mentally. I'm so much more ready uh, for whatever teams have to throw at me. Uh, maybe I'm not really involved in the line adjustments right now. So when you, you know, you have a free runner with Chris Jones running at you and you're forced to throw off your back foot and throw, maybe he's more prepared for that. And it just makes him even that much more efficient, but it is hard to fathom how much more efficient he can get since he had one of the most efficient seasons that we've ever seen. I mean, he's setting 49ers records, passing records, right? And like the 49ers, as far as uh, statistic passing yards and, and counting stats, even though they've had Hall of Fame quarterbacks, those numbers aren't that far out there. So, you know, Brock could could certainly continue to to throw for more yards and, and things like that. Maybe just higher volume is all it would take. But I wonder if potentially you're looking down the road and look, Kittle's on the wrong side of 30 now. Trent Williams is towards the end of his career. Hopefully he's he stays in, in place for a lot longer for the 49ers. Eric Armstead's been around for a long time for the 49ers. Um, it's and Christian McCaffrey, he he's not old by any means, but man, he's just played 40. He's played 40 games the last two years, Croc. We expect him to play another 20 games next year to be all good. Yep, Christian McCaffrey running back. They running backs get hurt more than any position in the NFL. And well, Christian McCaffrey, 20 more games. Yep, no problem. He's gonna do that. You know, it, it's just hard to envision all of those things happening. And this was the perfect uh storm of 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 great things and, and high level play for the 49ers. And the fact they couldn't get it done this year is a little disheartening, I think, because it's hard to envision how much better they could get. And then salary cap getting a little tighter, a little tighter. Eventually you got to pay Brock. You got to pay IU. And, and how does that look? And what do you have to do differently? And then it makes me think of the question, okay, well, do you try to elongate this period and extend how long you can be really good and competitive for a long time with your draft picks. And now you finally have another first round pick or do you go all in for the next run next year and say, I don't care what happens after 2024. We're going all in for this year. We do everything we can. And we might even hurt ourselves in the process with draft picks and cap space in the future to make this team the best we possibly could coming up in 2024. I think that's a huge question. The 49ers are going to have to figure out this, uh, this off season. Also, we didn't talk about health. The 49ers were relatively healthy in comparison to a lot of teams, right? Uh, yeah. I mentioned Dallas Cowboys early earlier. 
off bat, they lost Trevon Diggs. Like, you know, you would assume that's a huge loss for them, right? Four Niners lost Hufunga. They were able to kind of plug and play some other guys and not to diminish like his role on this team. He's a terrific safety, but I think the biggest blow for the 49ers, and you really felt the presence of it, was probably losing Drake Greenlaw in the playoff game, ruptured Achilles. Who knows when, you know, he'll be back. And it's not a super long recovery process, but maybe week one, you'll, you'll have him out there. Will he be 100% at that time? But Oren Burke's filling in for him. I saw something, and I don't know for a fact if this, you know, I didn't fact check it. Nine targets, nine catches given up. I mean, it was not good. So there's a big drop off there. They didn't have that for most of the season. You know, there was a game here and there a guy might miss. But if you go back to like 2020 season where you lost Debo for most of the season, Kittle for most of the season, uh, like okay. Richard Sherman, I think, went down. You know, Keller Witherspoon how it went down. And then you had Mosley and you had, you know, you lost Bosa. You lost uh, Solomon you Thomas. There were a lot of guys that just got hurt. You, you didn't have that really this year. So when we talk about repeating and where the 49ers go from here, how do you stay as healthy as you were this year? I mean, when's the last time did Nick did did George Killer play every game? No, I feel we're like so he, used to him missing. It was very one yeah. or two games, he, but he had, he had one of his more healthy seasons for sure. But you know, he didn't miss major time. So you know, kept him. You know, he's healthy and CMC. You know, he's relatively healthy. Like missed a half against uh, Cleveland, but outside of that, he's on the field. I think that the 49ers to get back got to be as healthy as they were this year and still like they needed have some ball bounces, have some balls bounce your way. Next, we got to talk about Kyle Shanahan. A lot of questions about his decision making throughout the game, end of half, third quarter, overtime. And what about the overtime decision itself? Next. This episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by DoorDash. Man, uh, <laughs> we're, we're supposed to talk about in this ad read, Croc, about how uh, a certain team delivered on Sunday. And I don't know if I want to go down that road, but I do want to tell the folks out there how DoorDash always does deliver for you. And they do for me. All of your restaurant favorites. The all-in app for your everyday needs, too. Not just for dinner, although... They got dinner covered. Restaurants, groceries. Uh, you, you need to get flowers or gifts. This Wednesday, if you forgot some flowers or gifts, DoorDash can bring them right to your door right when you need it just in time. So next time you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, or maybe you're just running low on time, you can get so much more than you realize delivered with DoorDash. So get dinner for tonight, get groceries for the week, or maybe a consolation prize for some of your sad 49ers friends in San Francisco and around the world because we are global here on Lockdown 49ers. You can find it all on DoorDash. DoorDash, your, to your door and more. Head to DoorDash app and get everything you need delivered. Eric Crocker, do you have problems with the way Kyle Shanahan called the game, with game management, with his decision to receive the kickoff in overtime? I want to start off by saying, because someone said, well, Croc, you want Kyle Shanahan fired. Like, who would you want to replace him? Whoa, buddy. Never <laughs> said that. I never said I want Kyle Shanahan fired. I, I think Kyle Shanahan is a terrific head coach. Uh, it seems like he has a really good grasp of the post of his team. Uh, all his players respect him. You, you don't just walk into multiple conference championship games and Super Bowls if you're not an, an excellent coach. So uh, from an, a coaching ability and my confidence level in him being able to get the 49ers to this position, things, you know, obviously you need some things go your way, but I feel like the 49ers will always be there because Kyle Shanahan is their coach. With that being said, there are some decision-making things that continue to concern me, right? As it as it pertains to winning a Super Bowl, because th that's what we're trying to do here. That that's been the goal, and I think you and I we talked about the 49ers in that light. Uh, it wasn't so much about a game; it was more so about moments in games that told you who this team was and if they were ready for that big game. Because we knew the 49ers would have an opportunity to play there. That's what we always discussed. His decision, let, let's, let's start, let's go back a little bit. 
because there were a few different decisions. And I think for Kyle Shanahan and any coach, it's good on good. It's great on great. It's going to come down to these detailed decisions, and that's going to shape the outcome of the game. We can point to false starts and holding from Trent Williams. We can talk about maybe a missed throw or maybe not the greatest third down conversion rate uh, passing by the 49ers this year. We can talk about a, a fumble or a, a, a ball that hits a guy's leg. But at the end of the day, you're going to have an opportunity. And based on your decision making leading to that point, that's going to determine how you, how, what the outcome of this game is. So first half, we talked about it. I did not care for him not using timeouts to get the ball back. You have to put your foot on their neck. Hey, I actually have to go with the idea. Hey, I hope we get a stop, but I'm assuming they're going to get points right now. If they get points and they get the ball back after halftime, that's two times they touch the ball and potentially put points on the board without us touching the ball. We have to be more aggressive. We have to go and try to win the game. All right. And Kyle sat with uh, three timeouts in his pockets. And then he it, finally calls a timeout with 20 seconds. If we're talking about Shanahan decisions and there's a lot of stuff that's been brought up to us, that, that's number one for me. That was wild, right? I, I, you, you got, are you going to be aggressive and try to get the ball back? Because Kansas City had control of the clock. They were going to have the time to do what they needed to at the end of half. So uh, you you not using a timeout doesn't hurt the opponent. So have as much time as possible to maybe have, you know, uh, a minute, 45 seconds left. Get down the field, kick a field goal of your own, right? Uh, and that you never know if you're going to have a timeout left or, you know, will you have one in your pocket, you know, just the way it might, may have shaped out. You, you never know, right? They're going to have to Maybe you get a big return. Maybe you get a big return. And I know coaches, what they want to do is on first down, they're not just going to say, all right, we got a timeout. We got pin 10 and there's 45 seconds left. Let's just start airing the ball out. No, they'll screen or draw, see if they can pick up nine or 10 yards or so. Mm -hmm. If so, okay, let's get on the ball and let's try to go for it and, and pick up hopefully maybe we can get a field goal. But that was the first thing right there where I'm like, okay, where's the aggressiveness? Now, what I loved, whether it worked out or not, and I said this to my buddies while we were watching the game, he's going for it, it's fourth. He said, I'm not going for the field goal. I'm going to take the lead. And I thought right there, Kyle, that's who we always need. You know, like that's the guy right there. You know, if you're going to win a Super Bowl, it's going to be because you have the cojones to make that decision Right there. It paid off. They scored a touchdown. All right. Now you got good guys on the other side. They ended up, you know, figuring it out. Boom. You go into overtime. It's tie game. Hold Which, on. Before we get before we get to overtime, uh, two more questions for you when it comes to Kyle Shanahan decisions. One of the things he's getting killed for is beginning of the second half and going straight to the air, throw, 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 throw. And I, I think was it nine straight pass plays and they go three and out twice in a row to start the second half. And the defense did their job against the, like the look, the defense held Patrick Mahomes in regulation and the Kansas city chiefs to 19 points that that should win the game for the 49ers in regulation. Um, and with how good the 49ers were doing up front for the most part in that game. And especially early, uh, it, it was, it was a little rough to see them give the ball right back to the chiefs multiple times to start the second half. The lack of run plays is really the the thing in question. What do you think about those decisions? You know, I, you know, we talked a little bit about it uh, after the show, but now we've had a little bit longer to process it. The tough thing is not knowing what they are saying in the in the locker room, what their halftime adjustments are. You know, you come out. I don't think you come out and say, "Hey, we want to throw three times." I think you come out and say, "Hey, they are loading up against the run. Let's get a completion and put us in more of a shorter yard situation, and then from there we can run the rock." But when you throw an incompletion, then you throw an incompletion, then you throw another incompletion, it's really difficult to kind of get in that rhythm. And we know even Brock Purdy, like, you know, he made some plays late in the game, but we know he plays best when he's in that rhythm and he starts to cook, right? So it's tough when you throw an incompletion on first down. It's hard to get in that rhythm. Maybe just forced to run with Chris McCaffrey, all right? But he had a lot of touches, 30 touches. Uh, could he have more? <laughs> sure, let's go. Give could him 40 more, touches yeah. if that's what it takes. When you look at – the usage McCaffrey got the ball a lot. If anything, it's like, give him a rest. And then we saw Elijah Mitchell finally get one carry. It was like, Oh, little juice got around the corner. It was a nice gain. Mix in a little more of that. So you can give 
someone else 10 carries plus still 30 carries or 30 touches to Christian McCaffrey. So, so that's the way I kind of look at that. And look, this guy's been a workhorse. He carried the ball so much this year. I know Christian McCaffrey runs to the sideline and he puts up one finger. He's like, I'm going to come out for one play. But Christian McCaffrey's not the head coach of the team. He doesn't have a headset on. You say, hey, Christian, you're coming out for three plays. Sorry, dude. Take a rest, right? And we're gonna and we're gonna c- continue. Do we want you to be fresh through the fourth quarter of this football game? Um, and so it's I just think the conventional thing is to say just run the ball. But right. in the game of you know chess on the football field, it, you're trying to counter what you think they're gonna do. And the Chiefs got the 49ers to do what they wanted to do, and the 49ers did not execute that to make them have to play honest. So we we had that conversation uh right. yesterday. We, real we quick. talked about that before the game even started. About right, right, what yeah. Michael was going to try to do. Guess what? He did it. And guess what? It worked again. It worked again. Over time, I have a huge issue with. Okay, and, hold, and on. I, hold on, hold on. Croc has a huge issue with overtime. I have a counter to Croc's huge issue in overtime, and I want to talk a little bit about Brock Purdy and uh, some comments the Chiefs have made since the Super Bowl. Next. This episode of Locked On 49ers is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to play with at FanDuel if that first bet of yours wins. Bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, tons more. Love the parlays at FanDuel. Major League Baseball is going to be getting going as well. And, you know, football season's over. Guess what? There's still 2024 season futures already there for you to bet on at FanDuel. And NFL draft props. Draft props are my favorite way to play at FanDuel, hands down. So uh, have some fun there and uh, get those draft props in early. If you think you got an edge on them, you know where some players might be going in the NFL draft. And all you got to do to get involved with all of it is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Makes me a little bit sad, Croc. It's like t- talking about, hey, NBA season's here. It's like, oh, man, NFL season's over. That's it. Uh, the Niners made it all the way, too. It's an extended season. We're, we're, dude, do you remember the days, Croc? I mean, you weren't a co-host on this podcast when the 49ers were bad. Uh, I was talking about draft a hell of a lot earlier in past seasons than I have been the last few years, especially since you came on board. So uh, 49ers are only getting better as this podcast gets better. Definitely. Uh, And Steph Curry just made a huge three point shot uh, the day before the Super Bowl, and not a whole lot of conversation about it because everybody's focused on the other Bay area team, San Francisco 49ers who were uh, playing in the Super Bowl. So that that just shows you with how big Curry is and how much he means to the Bay area and and that Warriors fan base. Not a whole lot of talk about what was a tremendous three-point shot made by him. Is there is there some similarities there too? Uh, Patrick Mahomes always gets the Jordan comparison, but when I think of how that game went and Patrick Mahomes, it's almost more Curry-like in the way that you can't keep giving him opportunities. So maybe he's maybe he's maybe he's two for eight on threes, and you've got a little bit of a lead. But if you get late in the game and you let him keep shooting, and all of a sudden. They're down by two. He's going to hit that shot eventually. You can't keep giving him the opportunities to hit that shot. And and the 49ers not only gave him the opportunity, they gave him the last opportunity. Yep. And we talked about that was something that just you can't let that happen. So uh, a lot of the conversation yesterday between you and I, we're talking and people think that I'm kind of ripping Purdy. Uh, definitely not ripping Purdy at all. I think Purdy played mm-hmm. well. They, they were like, oh, he played great. I don't think he played great. I think he played well, though. But to beat Patrick Mahomes, you have to play more than just like, man, I play well. Like, you know, we I made some plays, I made some throws, like, you know, I threw a touchdown, like, yeah, that's cool. But you got to make the plays to be able to overcome him. And it's not just the Brock Purdy thing, or I don't don't even want to say issue because I don't think he played poorly, but Kyle Shanahan. Uh, I was very confused with the decision at the time to receive the kick kind of knowing the new rules and how, how they're going about things. Yeah. So Croc, you were way ahead of me when, when, when it happened, I wasn't even thinking about it. And after our podcast, I didn't bring it up during our podcast because, and I, I think volume, I, I wasn't really hearing what the play by play was on the TV and I was kind of locked into it. And I, I was with some folks and, um, and maybe they were talking a lot more about it on the broadcast. 
but I, I was kind of surprised when we were done with our podcast and I went back and started listening to some of the interviews post game and they were asking him about the decision. And I was like, what, what do you mean the decision? Of course you receive the kickoff. And I was like, Oh, wait a second. And it, it never even dawned on me at the time when it was happening, what the new rules were. Cause this is the first time we've seen it. Cause it's only a new rule only for the playoffs. So it hadn't been a factor throughout the regular season. And then when you hear the post game comments of Kyle use it was like, yeah, I don't really know what the right thing is supposed to be. And then you hear all the chiefs guys are like, yeah, we've been practicing this. We knew exactly what it was going to be. We knew that we wanted to get the ball second. And then we knew if we went down and had to score a touchdown, we we're going to go for two. So the, the other team didn't have that extra shot to have the, the sudden death win and get the ball back again. And I'm like, man, it does seem like the Kansas City Chiefs had that scenario planned out a lot better than the 49ers. I don't know when the decisions were made for the 49ers that they would want to receive that kick. If it was mid-game, if it was well before, Kyle Shanahan did talk about the analytics after the game, thought he would want the ball first. That way he would get the ball again if both teams scored, and then you would have the hammer to win the game with sudden death in that case. And clearly Andy Reid thought of it a lot differently. And uh sounds like, Croc, you saw it like Andy Reid saw it. There is no way. We talked about this with the Locked On crew. You cannot give Mahomes, and we gave him two cracks at it. You can't give him the opportunity to tie the game or go ahead. You you just can't. And the 49ers gave him two opportunities, but the second time was something that you chose to do. Like you chose to put the ball in the hands of him, not knowing exactly how the outcome of your drive is going to be. And it's like, why would you ever do that? You and then the thought process. So Kyle knew. I thought maybe Kyle didn't know the rules. Yeah. Kyle knew the rule. But he said, uh, well, they get the ball. And then, I mean, we get the ball and we score. Then they're going to go and they're going to match. No, they never planned to match you. They plan to beat you. <laughs> like right. they said, we planned all week. We are going for it. If this situation comes up, we're going for two. So Kyle, you were never going to get the ball back. You were either going to win it in regulation. I mean, excuse me, in, in, uh, by, yeah, regulation and then score, tech, whatever. But they were always going to try to win at the end with a two point. And that just shows right there just the aggressive nature of, of Andy Reid just going for it, right? Like that was his thing. That's, yeah. we talked about a lot. Like he wants to win the game. He's calling these games to win it. I think Dan Campbell had that same mindset. The execution wasn't as great. He also doesn't have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. That may make a difference, you know, Jared Goff, Patrick Mahomes. But maybe having Patrick Mahomes allows you to do things like that. But with Kyle Shanahan and his thinking, oh, yeah, we'll go and then they'll match us and then we get the ball back. No, Kyle, you, how are you? How are you going into this with the thought process that you're getting the ball back with Mahomes at quarterback? Like, you know what he does. Matter of fact, real quick, I saw a comment and someone said, uh, Chiefs said their game plan all along with two, two touchdowns. I mean, after the touchdowns, go for two. No matter what, you weren't getting a third possession. There was another comment where someone talked about how it was like, does Kyle not know who Patrick Mahomes is? And that's the conversation I would have with him. Like, you saw what happened in, in 2019. So you can't play this to play the safest route yeah because yeah. they're not you, you got to go and so that might the, just the, the the picking to receive in that situation because you think there's going to be some kind of third no you give them the ball first figure out what they're going to do and one more thing a lot of people are talking about well the defense long drive tight you guys got to let them hang and you got to suck it up for this drive no matter how it goes down like you just have to and then okay, offense, let's go. And we're and now we're gonna be the great, we're gonna dictate how we go win this game. It's the the psychology of it is what fascinates me. And the fact that Kyle Shanahan in the other, you know, in the other seat, if he's the one that has the ball second and the Chiefs went and scored a touchdown, Kyle for sure is not going for two. You know what I mean? Like that didn't cross his mind that oh yeah, they would they could go for two and I wouldn't we would never get the ball back. That's just you know because he doesn't he's not wired that way. Andy Reid's like, let's go, let's gamble. <laughs> and I, I'm kind of bummed because how how awesome would that would have been? It was would have hurt more for the 49ers fans. They lost Super Bowl anyway, but to have it come down to a two point conversion end of overtime to win it one play that would have been pretty cool. If the Niners scored a touchdown, the Chiefs went down, scored a touchdown, then had to go for two. Andy Reid's really good at dial, dialing up those red zone plays too and those two point conversions. And in fact, the one they scored the touchdown on. That might have been their two-point conversion play, 
but they didn't ne- they didn't need it for that because they only needed a touchdown and so they used it there. They might have scored a different way if it did did come down to that. We might have seen that play as their two boy, two point conversion play, or maybe he has something else dreamed up. Um, but and the other part of it is the more I think about it, the more I realize for sure you want to have the ball second because again the psychology of it. If you're the team that has the ball first, even if you have Patrick Mahomes on your side, you're still more likely to say, okay, well, let's get some points and let's kick a field goal. Whereas if you know what the other team already did, it makes your job a lot easier to know exactly what you have to do to go in the game. So I I think right now, uh, I think I would absolutely side on kicking in the overtime scenario in the playoffs. But one more quick note here. This is from Seth Walder, who does uh, analytics at ESPN. And uh, he had this tweet about it this morning. He said, from an NFL analytics staffer this morning on first versus second possession in playoff overtime, quote, anyone that is very confident there is a clear option is probably wrong. So that's the analytics side saying that's pretty much 50-50, which to me says, then that's an awesome rule. Because if it really doesn't matter that much, then, then maybe it doesn't matter. And maybe if you have Patrick Mahomes, maybe you are more likely to, to kick. Maybe if you uh, have a different team and, 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 and you think that it could benefit you knowing who you are, who you're playing against in those situations, maybe it does make some sense in some cases to go the other way if it's that close to 50-50. And it also means that I think it's a great rule if the coin flip is not the thing that's making the decision on who wins the game and not having that big of a factor. So I do love this new rule for the NFL. And I think they got it right. If it is that close analytically to, to pretty close to 50, 50 on whether you would receive or kick. No, I'm not no NFL coach or anything like that. I coach high school football. I coach seven on seven, seven on seven in overtime. Uh, what happens is each team gets one play and the team who gets the furthest you, you win. Oh, so, wow. so you always, choose to let that team like no we want to be on defense if you win the coin toss all right we're on defense they're on offense you see how many yards they get if they throw a pass and it's incomplete okay we need one yard what's our best one yard play if they throw a pass and they get eight yards okay how do we get nine yards how do we get 10 yards i think for kyle shanahan he chose to say you know what we're just going to see how many yards we get and then let's just try to stop them from getting however however many yards they're going to get and i just think that's uh, kind of a flawed way of uh, of doing it especially against Andy Reid. I watched Andy Reid with Patrick Mahomes going out of the game in a postseason game against the Cleveland Browns at almost midfield. And he chose to go for it on fourth and three with Chad Henney at quarterback. They were up three points maybe, but definitely Cleveland had an opportunity. They stopped him right there. Oh, we're at midfield. We could get a chance to go score and win or go into OT and there's no Mahomes out there. And even then Andy Reid said, going for it on fourth down so you got to know who you're coaching against i guess the big question is hypothetically speaking and we can't i mean we already know the outcome of this game but hypothetically speaking kansas city got the ball first that fourth and one around the 40 yard line or so wherever that was in their own territory do they go for it uh let's see wait how long was the field goal there if it's a long they know that they were in their own territory they were they were in their territory the other 40 yeah oh yeah (laughs) So no field goal option at all. No. But you definitely set the 49ers up to where they need five yards in their field goal range. Right. So do they go for it in that scenario, or do you think you they punt it? Because if, if they punt it, then, you know. Yeah. Also with these things, I've watched enough of these time traveler movies and shows to know when you when you go back, when they travel back in time, they'll tell you don't change anything because then it changes everything moving forward so if we go back in time and we say all right you're going to kick it kyle even that drive from kansas city may go different maybe you never get to fourth and one right like just something different happens it doesn't play out exactly how it did that's why i keep going back to the mccaffrey fumble i think that was the biggest play in the entire game because the 49ers were just about to you you remember back in the day this is what i think about with this and and we got to go but um mike tyson you know prime mike tyson first round of the of the fight he hits you with a shot you know that left hook or an uppercut it buckles your knees and that's a different fight from that moment on and the 49ers were about to throw that blow against the chiefs early in the game and the way it looked early and then even after the 
the fumble. And then the way the 49ers got the ball right back, three and out, like they did nothing. The 49ers dominant up front. And they got the ball back in and started rolling down the down the field one more time, right? You go hit them with two big haymakers on those first two drives, and your defense got the ball right back, and they could not move the ball on you at all. I mean, that's just a completely different football game the rest of the way. And, and that's what you need to do. Like, to, to beat them, it need to be more so like that than Mahomes has an opportunity to go down and score and win the game. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and we said that. Like, we said that all week. You cannot – it can't come down to this. You're probably going to lose. Can't miss those opportunities when he throws an arm punt up there. He almost threw a second interception in that game, and, and Deshaun Gibson, you know, lost it in the air. You know, that's an interception. Like you, you can't let those kind of things. Um, you can't give up those kind of plays. Or, or you they did force a fumble like the next player too, though. Oh, oh, you, on, on Pacheco yeah. ended up fumbling on the same drive. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, right after that. Um, but I mean, just mentally, you're you're more. Busted probably if Mahomes is struggling throwing interceptions than even if Pacheco fumbles, um, and, and it could change the way you're you're calling the game. But anyway, um, tease this one for tomorrow. Uh, the comments from the Kansas City Chiefs about Brock Purdy about how they wanted to play the San Francisco 49ers. Of course, it's a Winky Wednesday tomorrow. The voice of the fan, Nick Winkler, he's going to give us some perspective on what the game was like for. Uh, most of the fans out there, although I kind of already know because we've heard from a lot of them so far in uh, in less than 24 hours as we sit right now from when that game ended. Appreciate all the everydayers out there. Uh, we're going to get deeper into the offseason, what the 49ers need to do, free agency draft, all of that, because we are with you every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Croc and I back tomorrow, Locked On 49ers.